Okay, so we got some kind of breaking news here. So this is kind of coming in, and so we're speculating as to who the VP pick for Kamala Harris is going to be. Kamala Harris is now the de facto nominee uh, for the presidential election for 2024. And so we're kind of trying to, you know, gather around who Kamala Harris is going to choose to be her vice president. There's a big sweepstakes going on right now. Now, I posted a video just yesterday talking about how, hey, it's uh, is this person the vice president? Because Andy Bashir is doing a bunch of stuff now where he's sending out political stuff and then he's officially being vetted by the uh, by the Kamala team and then also there's some rumors that he got ex extra detail and security we'll go over that later but here we have a new hint that's leading us into a different direction. This is a pretty massive one. What seems to be clear according to the reporting is the uh, choice is, is imminent. The decision is imminent and it's supposedly going to be announced uh, sometime on Monday. So sometime next week. So the universal thing that seems to be true is it's imminent. The decision is actually imminent here. But So here's a, a, a reporting from Holly Otterbein. She's at uh, Politico. She says, Scoop, Kamala Harris is expected to announce her running mate by Tuesday when she will hold her first rally with her pick in Philadelphia. The two will then hit Western Wisconsin, Detroit Rally, Savannah, Phoenix, and Las Vegas. Um, she says, Harris's decision to kick off her tour in the biggest city in PA is uh, sure to set off speculation about a running mate. One of the top VP contenders is Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. A campaign aide cautioned against reading too much into the first stop, however. So this is like the big caveat here because so everybody responds is like, oh shoot, the decision is going to be Shapiro, right? That's who it's going to be. So we can see here, uh, like this is the schedule. Uh, this is Kamala Harris announces rally schedule per Politico. It's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, then Western Wisconsin, then Detroit, Michigan, then Rally, North Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, Phoenix, Arizona, Las Vegas, Nevada. So uh, one thing important to notice is Coop is out. So uh, Roy Cooper, governor of North Carolina, has he's dipped. He's not part of the race. He said, I'm out. I'm not part of the sweepstakes anymore. So he's out of the conversation. So at this point, it seems like Andy Beshear took a little bit of a surge. But it appears that the main people are, I think Shapiro, and I think Shapiro is probably the leading candidate behind the scenes, but him, Kelly, and then uh, Walls and Bashir, I think, are less likely. But I think Shapiro is clearly, uh, as of right now, behind the scenes, sort of the uh, front runner in the race to win this. And so everybody's looking at this and saying, hold on, wait a second. So the first rally pick is going to be announced in Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. So everyone's expecting it to be Shapiro. So this is a huge hint in that direction. I think that's what everybody would think. That is what everybody thinks. But then the one county caveat here is, oh, a campaign aid cautioned against reading too much into the first stop, however. So again, this is kind of weird in terms of like, are you just trying to gaslight us? It feels like gaslighting, to be honest with you. Uh, the other thing you could say maybe is, oh, well, Philly, you know, uh, PA is the most important state this time around, so they want to start there anyways. But one way I was trying to think about it was like, okay, you know, with the law, I don't know if you guys know the law of the excluded middle and philosophy, but it's kind of the idea, like, if you have a binary statement, it's either true, it is true or it's false, it can't be somewhere in the middle. So... If I can't figure out how to necessarily prove that Josh Shapiro is the vice president, let me try and think of it not being him and see if that makes any sense. Uh, it's like proof by contradiction kind of idea, right? So I'm kind of thinking like, okay, so Josh Shapiro is not going to be the vice president. He's heated in the race, reported to be the front runner in the race. He's not going to be the VP. Kamala and whoever the VP is is going to trot themselves down for the first trip in Philadelphia. He's going to be there kind of third wheeling low key, kind of like, hey, he's the governor of the state. You didn't even choose him. It's going to probably be kind of embarrassing, I feel like. So I personally think that this does heavily lean in. I'm not saying he is for sure the pick, but just kind of like going with the negation and kind of carrying it out and seeing if that makes any sense. It just doesn't really make much sense to me that you would pick Philadelphia as the first spot. You have Shapiro being the leading uh, candidate, and then you're just going to have him as kind of like this sort of, he's probably going to feel a certain type of way, and it's going to look awkward and weird for that to happen. Um, and then notice, you know, we didn't even have Minnesota on here. So Walls is home, you know, home state isn't even on here. He's not even on this list. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not part of it. And I think someone kind of like had sent out like historic data of like a or historical analysis of like, hey, here was the home state of this person. I think Joe Biden or whatever. They start in California or something like that. Um, I think this situation is different because you're starting in a swing state. So actually, funny enough, historically, recently, at least, it doesn't appear that kind of picking the swing state candidate for vice president is actually really that common. I mean, Biden was from Delaware, right? Uh, who cares about Delaware? We're completely worthless, right? You have Kamala's from California, again, completely worthless, right? These are not very helpful states in any way, shape, or form because they're not swings, right? So it's not really super common anyways. But 
if you do choose a candidate who's from a swing state, then I think it does matter in terms of the scheduling. So maybe the scheduling didn't matter because they weren't from an important state. If it's not from an important state, who cares, right? Who cares? Um, and so I think my gut and intuition is telling me this, that it's probably going to end up being Shapiro based on this. He's the front runner anyways. So nobody should be surprised by it being Shapiro. He's the front runner, clearly. The, the big downsides of Shapiro, obviously, are he's more conservative. He's definitely the most conservative, I think, out of the current runners of like him, Walls, Bashir, um, and Kelly. He's definitely the most conservative out of the bunch. I don't know if he's going to make a more progressive turn, but like right at the time he gets picked or right before he gets picked. Also, I I watched him. I was not enthused by him as a speaker. I actually was, I actually was more of the camp of I thought Walls was the most progressive, but uh, Shapiro would be the most electorally helpful because if Shapiro carries Pennsylvania for you, I don't really see it being in the sample space that the the campaign wins Pennsylvania but somehow loses the race. I just don't see how it being possible. It seems so unfathomably unlikely. Especially because I think there's hedges against Michigan and Wisconsin with Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. I think those are solid hedges that you could even use in a worst-case scenario. Um, so I didn't like how he spoke in the video. I didn't. I don't find him to be like a really enthusiastic speaker. I don't find him to be like super rhetorically effective. I thought uh, his flag attacks were kind of weird, and then he was kind of hitting on some weird stuff that I didn't really think was effective, like book banning or whatever. I don't really think that's going to sit with well, like big with anybody. Um, and there's some like kind of controversy with Kamala about the border stuff. You know, I'm team Walls firmly now. I think that Walls can actually have some real like crossover appeal with Republicans and moderates. So I'm hoping that despite him not being from a swing state, he can kind of appeal to those people. And he has, you know, a harder background. It looks like he looks harder. And, you know, he's from, uh, you know, he has a military background where Shapiro kind of has like, again, like that sort of metrosexual kind of vibe, right, of like a, of the typical democratic national male, right? He, I think Walls brings something very different. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see what happens. But Andy Bashir, this is actually after, I don't know if uh, this happened after I uploaded the video or not, I recorded the video, uh, but yesterday's video didn't include this. This is another, <laughs> this is another tweet from Bashir. He says, scripture Galatians 6, 2 reminds us, carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So he's kind of doing this very presidential, right? You want to pontificate about religion and that stuff. And I'm not necessarily saying he doesn't genuinely believe in it. I think it's a good strategy to kind of... Uh, progressivize uh, scripture as much as you can for any religion, I think. I used to think, I think that it's like, nah, like, let the religion kind of exhibit its bad characteristics so that people decide that it's bad and toss it away. I don't think that really works. <laughs> so I think, I think the best strategy is to just, you know, to progressivize it. So he's, I think, trying to use this in his favor in terms of making arguments for progressivism via religion, which I think is good. But this is just politics 101, you know, he's hugging his constituent who looks like she's in distress or something. And you know, trying to help people and everything. And then, you know, uh, his wife had sent out this tweet every day. I see Andy works so hard to make the right decisions and to lead with empathy, strength, and courage. It's never easy, but he always remains committed to doing what's right. Like looking very vice presidential here. He looks a little bit scary, to be honest. He says, everything I do is only possible because I have my best friend by my side. So <laughs> I love you. Again, like very vice presidential stuff. And then this unconfirmed source, I still don't know like what person this guy is. He says that supposedly he got additional security detail protection, but there's no actual evidence of this in my humble opinion. And then this says, new on MSNBC, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir is officially being vetted by the Harris campaign as a potential vice presidential nominee pick according to the two sources familiar with the process. So right now, I would say it's probably the list in terms of likelihood from what's going on behind the scenes is probably Shapiro, Kelly, um, Bashir and then Walls and uh, I can't remember if I'm actually forgetting someone at this point <clears throat> that's probably the ranking of the likelihood it seems like Walls is probably last now which sucks because he's actually my favorite candidate and I know a lot of you guys and a lot of progressives are supporting him because he's the most progressive guy and running on issues um, so that's unfortunate if Bashir I think would be a good like compromise and then my only hope of Shapiro is that if it is Shapiro who I don't want I hope that he does deliver Pennsylvania for us kind of as a hedge against wanting him because it could be a win-win situation for me where it's like, okay, even though I didn't get, I didn't get walls who I wanted, if he's able to carry Pennsylvania for us, well, that's a dub in and of itself. So it's kind of like a win-win is the hope. But if he can't carry Pennsylvania for you, it's not a win-win. So uh, yeah, we got speculation going on. The thing that seems pretty clear is the drop is pretty imminent. I think it should be Monday next week. So let me know who you think it's going to be. Do you think it's going to be this? Because that caveat there, don't put too much stock into uh, the first campaign stop. That is what the Kamala campaign is. The question is, do you believe that?